everybody, welcome back to a video in our Rope Access series. Today we are going to look at an interesting variation on probably one of the most commonly used knots out there, certainly in Rope Access and Rescue, the Alpine Butterfly. Um, what we're looking at here, of course, is the classic two-point redundant type anchor, very commonly referred to as a Y-hang. Type setup. We have a figure eight on a bite on this side, and an alpine butterfly over there. But um, some of you will, will immediately identify the fact that there are no connectors used in here, uh, and we have tied the entire system through the two collared eye bolts to create the anchor. So no carabiners or connectors at all. The follow through or rewoven figure eight on the bite up here. It's pretty common knowledge how to do that. We might do another video on that at some stage. But certainly some of you may be looking at the other side over here and go, hang on, there's an alpine butterfly tied through that collared eye bolt. How has that been done? So effectively what we've got there is a follow through alpine butterfly. And that's what we're gonna look at how to do in this video. Okay, so our start position for the re-threaded or follow-through alpine is in fact an overhand knot. Unlike the more commonly known follow-through or re-threaded figure eight, where we start with that very distinctive eight shape, this one's a little bit different. We're gonna start with a simple overhand knot. So it looks like this. What we're gonna do then is take the running part of rope here, and we're either going to go around an object if we're tying around an anchor, or in this case here, we're going to go through collared eye bolt that we want to attach into. What we need to do now is look at the overhand knot that we've created here. We want to sort of visualize that as being a, a capital letter D. So looking at this one here, we'd say that's the spine of the D and that's the loop of the D and it would make sense to say the D is basically facing towards me. If I turn the overhand like that, the D looks normal, there's the spine, and there's the big loop of the D facing away. This matters because it gives us a starting shape um, to line up the running part of rope here. The easiest way to start off with our follow through or rethread alpine butterfly is by having the long side or the back of the D in line with or parallel with the running part of rope. So if I had it orientated like that, it would be the incorrect start position. I want to orientate them. So they're this way. Because we're dealing with an overhand knot here, it's asymmetrical and it matters which way we look at it. So if I had a D facing this way, I could sort it out by putting the running part there. So let's start off like this. And we have the back of the D lined up with the running part of rope. We need the running part to enter the overhand. But the trick is it's not gonna go into the big hole here. We're gonna create a nip just in here. So we literally push the running part away from the body to create a little hole that's there. That's where the running part of rope is going to enter the knot like this. As soon as we pass that in and draw it up neat, you can already see the knot starting to form. And it's crucial that those two parts of rope just there are together. We don't want to have an intervening part of rope in between them. If I put this part, uh, running part of rope here in the wrong way, there'll be an intervening loop and it'll be incorrect. So we've already got our loop forming there and our knot is starting to form. That's step one. Stage two then, we're going to look at the big hole in the D and check how the standing part of rope is emanating out. In this case here, we would say that the standing part is coming up and out of the big hole. If I turn it over the other way, quickly like this, we can see the standing part of rope is, a way of saying it is it's going down or into the big hole. And again, this matters. If we look at it this way, whatever the standing part of rope is doing relative to the big hole, we're going to take the running part and do the exact opposite. So for me, the running part needs to go down and into the big hole because the standing part is coming up and out. So we're going to do this, down into the big hole, like so. That's step two. What we need to do now is look at the loop that we've just created here and the loop will either be 
open like this, and it literally has an opening on the end, like the opening of a bottle, or it'll be closed like that. We need to have a closed loop to finish off the knot. If the loop that we just created is open, we close it by twisting it. And for whatever reason, if we twist it in one direction, it just doesn't seem to work. It twists incorrectly. Whereas if we twist it in the correct direction, it just seems to fold over nicely and it creates the big hole that we're then going to reach into, draw the running part out, and of course there's our alpine there, finished. Okay, so those three stages are making sure that we start with an overhand, not a figure eight. We make sure that the two parts of the loop enter the knot together. Then we look at the big hole, and if the standing part is coming up and out, the running part goes down and in, or vice versa. And stage three, the loop that we generate on the opposite side, if it's open, we twist it, giving it a natural twist, draw the running part out, and finish the knot. And there we have it.